Hi, my name is Kim Goldtom, and I am a certified master wellness coach through the Air National Association of Wellness Professionals, as well as the founder of the Empowered Living for Superwomen program. And I'm excited to be connecting with you today and talking about boundaries in the workplace. We're going to be talking about three tips that you can use. So by the time this video is over, you will easily be able to implement them. So I don't know if it's been your experience that you're working eight to faint and feel like you are glued to your cell phone as well as your laptop and you would just like to have some more time to yourself as well as a day off where you didn't have to be reacting in every moment that you get a notification. So if that sounds familiar or resonates with you, then stay tuned because here we go. We are going to start talking about boundaries. And there's some of you out there who are wondering, so what is a boundary anyway? So I want you to think of boundaries in this capacity. I think this is a really great analogy to really understand them as invisible property lines, right? You know where you live and you know what is your defined space, whether it's an apartment, a condo, a townhome, a house, right? And then you know what property you have, if you have a driveway, if you have a garage, there's defined space. Those are your property boundaries. So when they're invisible lines, it's a little bit different. And so we need to be more mindful of what those are. What are the, the boundaries that I have for how late I'm going to be checking email on my cell phone? How late I'm going to be, or early, I'm going to be on my laptop checking email or working on projects or doing whatever it is that you do, right? Most people in corporate America today work 40 to 50 hours a week. But if we don't create boundaries, that can easily turn into 50 to 70 hours a week. And I know I've been there <laughs> and I was not good at creating boundaries. I really didn't understand what boundaries were. So boundaries, creating these invisible lines that protect us and they define us. And it in turn creates habits and patterns for how other people interact with us. So getting curious to learn more? <laughs> I know I was. So think about it. How often do you react every time you have a notification? Do you have everything set on notifications that no matter what day, what time, what hour you're responding? Do you say yes to every single project, even though you know it's going to extend beyond what you had imagined would be your work day and possibly even conflict with, I don't know, an event, a birthday party, a holiday gathering? Maybe it was just personal time for you so you could rejuvenate and recharge. Are there clear lines on when you have time dedicated for you? and when you have time dedicated for your work and for your family. And what happens when we don't create boundaries? Well, <laughs> we get really tired, we get overwhelmed, we get stressed, we're kind of a, that phrase, you know, zooming around like a chicken without a head. That, that's what happens when we don't have boundaries. So what are some things you can do to start incorporating boundaries in your work life today? Right? And it's always about one step at a time, just one layer. So here's tip number one. And I always say, take what fits and discard the rest. So if you don't like tip number one, don't worry. We've got two more tips coming. But tip number one, block all of your time on your calendar. And maybe you do this you know, annually. Maybe you do this quarterly. It depends how you operate and, and the demands of your business, your work, and how that unfolds for you. But here's what I like to block my personal time. You, if you like to read and you want two hours to read, dedicate that time. Maybe it's to watch a movie, you know, and I'm, obviously you already have your work schedule on there. I'm talking about after work schedule, blocking massages, dental appointments, any annual or quarterly or monthly doctor's appointments that you need, get them all on there. Vacations, personal day off, birthday parties, holidays, traveling and maybe it's just a day to do nothing because rest believe it or not is a state of being and doing something so tip number one is to really block off everything on your calendar that you want to do everything cooking 
Don't forget sleep. Sleep is important. It makes it, it rejuvenates us, detoxifies us overnight, right? So powerful. But seriously, blocking everything on your calendar. So that way, when somebody asks you, can you take on this additional task? Can you take on this additional project? Can you do this with this team? Is it okay to miss this Saturday? And I'm not saying you're going to say no always because there's going to be times where, yes, you're a team player and you're going to go for it and you're going to do it. But if it means you're going to miss your child's piano recital or birthday party or your dedicated time for self-care so you can rejuvenate to show up in the world as the best version of you, then maybe those are times you should say no and you protect those boundaries. But this is where you have to decide and define what are those boundaries that I am willing to have and where is that flexibility in the boundary, if at all, that I want to have. So tip number one, block everything, literally everything on your calendar. So then you know if you can say yes or no to something. Okay, you ready for tip number two? <laughs> okay. So every time your supervisor or your boss asks you to take on an additional task, I want you to get in the habit of just saying, let me take some time, double check my calendar. Can I get back to you within 8, 12, 24 hours? Whatever is appropriate for you to be able to respond politely, respectively, of course. But giving yourself that time to not get excited in the moment and then in the process, over commit yourself, eliminate a boundary that you forgot, oopsie daisy, right? So creating that boundary. You know, people have this expectation of us because we've created habits and expectations with them. So let me just give you an example. If you are one of those people who has your phone notifications for email going off every single time something comes in and your boss, your colleagues are aware that you do this, they know based on your response in the past, oh my gosh, email Kim any time of the day, doesn't matter, she will email within two minutes, guaranteed. Because those are the patterns, the habits that we've created and then the expectations based on how we have modified or not modified our behavior. So. It's, it's amazing, right? So if you can start creating these new boundaries by when, a, for example, tip number two, when your boss or co colleague or supervisor asks you to take on more outside of your traditional work hours, right? Give it a pause. So you have time to reflect. Of course, double check your calendar, but also check in with yourself. Am I burning the candle at both ends? If I say yes to this, will this overstress me? Will this um, overwhelm me? Right? There's always going to be a little bit of a state of stress because when we're trying to do our best, we get a little anxious. So I'm not saying, you know, to be overstressed or stressed. I just know it's we're human. We're going to have a little bit of stress. But is it going to be at the point where we're pushing over the edge? So having that time to just kind of reflect, take back, pause. Now I can give a better answer to determine, can I say yes and give the best of myself that I want for my quality of work to do the best job I can. I don't want to say yes to a project or to something if I know I can't give it my all. So having that time to pause and reflect, magic. Okay, tip number three, you guys ready for this? So tip number three, find an accountability partner, whether it's a friend, a family member, a coworker, a colleague, have them be your accountability partner on this journey as you start to create boundaries. Explain to them about boundaries and what you're looking to do and how by achieving boundaries in your life is going to create less stress, help you sleep better, have more time, more energy so that you can show up your very best in the world. And so find that person, get them on board. That's tip number three. So I've shared three tips with you and now you have time to kind of think about, well, which one do I resonate with? You know, is it blocking everything on my calendar? Is it, you know, putting the pause and waiting 8, 10, 12, you know, 24 hours to respond to an additional work request or, and or the support person? 
And if you have time in your schedule to do all three, that's magical. But if you could only do one, start with one this week, what would it be? Just think about that for a moment. Okay, great. So I want you to do it. I want you to commit to it. And I want you to see how that can change the volume of stress, the ability of being able to sleep, enjoy more your quality time with friends, family, as well as showing up in your work to the best of your ability that you want to be seeing and doing, right? Because you've got all the energy to be able to commit to that. So I wanna thank you for taking time to learn about boundaries, thinking about which tip you're gonna incorporate and how you're gonna start creating boundaries in your life if you haven't done so already, or maybe kind of tweak some of the ones you do have. And I wanna give you uh, kudos for taking that step. That's a huge step. And thank you for taking time to be here with me. So if you resonate with these tips, I encourage you to check out my six secrets to recharging a superwoman at creatinglegacywellness.com. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.